Omega Game Framework, a free plugin for Unreal Engine, includes a special type of asset called a data item. A data item is a data asset with some unique functionality, primarily the ability to implement reusable data-only components called traits. To make a new data item, you can either search from the Data Assets submenu, or you can just go to the Omega tab and select Data Item. Here you can see some of the built-in functionality for a data item. Automatically, you can give it a name, a description, as well as an icon. You can also specify a gameplay category and give it gameplay tags. The gameplay category is a single tag useful for breaking down what specific type of item this is. For example, if it's a magic spell or in a piece of equipment. Now one of the most important things about data items is that you don't need to create any children of them. For example, if you wanted different data for weapons or for items or for skills or any of that stuff, you don't actually have to create different childs of a data item like you would with a data asset or most other blueprints. And the reason for that is because of this right here called traits. Traits are very similar to actor components, but they work for data items and they're data only. They're sort of like advanced structs where they are customizable and reusable, only they can contain functions as well. Here's an example of some of the traits we have automatically in Omega Game Framework. What's useful about this is it allows you to get a lot more creative with the type of data and assets you have in your game. Such as how an item and a skill might both have effects that they apply in battle, but they also have different functionality, such as an item is consumable while a skill is not. To make your own data traits, just open up the context menu, go to Blueprint, and look up Omega Data Trait. From here, we can add whatever variables we want. We also have some useful functions we can apply per trait. For example, we can append things onto the item's name, its description, or add more tags to it. Now let's go ahead and add our trait. To access information from your traits, all you need to do is reference them as you would any other data asset. Another useful little feature about traits, since they're designed to work modularly without needing to know everything about when and how they're used, is that they come with a few functions called Applied to Actor, Applied to Component, and Applied to Widget. This is a way where on a trait by trait and case by case basis, you can decide to have certain effects or modifications to actors or widgets or components. As an example, let's add a trait here called Skeleton Mesh. What this does is, when it applies this to an actor, it's going to check and see if that actor is a character, and if so, it's going to replace its mesh and its animation instance with whatever we specify here. We can also specify what flag we want it to do it on. So for example, let's go ahead and say that when we apply this trait, we're going to set the character to use a default mannequin and the default mannequin's animation blueprint. To test it out, let's go ahead and make a new character class. On the construction script, let's go ahead and apply this item to the actor. What this means is it'll run through all of the traits on this item and try to run their apply to actor function. Now, since that item only worked on set character flag, let's make sure that's the flag we use. Let's now drag our character in, then under the data item variable that we added, let's click our item, and there we have our character added in. And this essentially makes it very easy to change things from a data only perspective. For example, let's say instead of a white character, we had a character who was blue. Well, all we need to do to change it is just take that new character, apply them, and boom, there we go. Now in this case, we used a reference to a data item, but we can also add the data item component, which will handle some of that functionality itself. Another useful feature for data items is trait collections, which, as it sounds, is a collection of traits that can be bundled together and then reused on different items. Since a big focus of Omega Game Framework is on modularity, another useful feature coming with data items is the data item subsystem. This is particularly useful for referencing a bunch of data items en masse by things like tags, category, or type, or even getting every data item in your game. 
It's particularly useful if you have a certain type of item, like maybe achievements or something, that you'll want to reference all of in a menu, but you don't necessarily want to have to continually go and re-add new achievements to a list every single time you add one. You'd rather them just automatically be added as soon as you create them. In order to be able to do that, you will need to specify a directory to scan for your data items. By default, it'll scan the entire game content folder. Although, depending on how big your game is, that'll definitely create a hitch when you start up as it takes time to scan through your entire folder. It's recommended you create a subfolder to store all your data items inside of, and then just scan that. One more useful feature is by using the data item component that we referenced earlier, you can actually get an actor from its data item. 